Hey there, YouTubers. I really was in love with this Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120 SE CPU cooler. At least until I got this CPU cooler. This is the uh, Thermalrite Frost Commander 140 White. Bigger version of that CPU cooler. Now, I have the i7-13700K under here. Uh, even as good as this CPU cooler is. And uh, that CPU cooler only costs 35 bucks. Um, CPU cooler is really not good enough for the i7-13700K. At least if you really want to benchmark it. If you want to do overclocking. Or just, you know, gaming around and putzing around on the internet. It's uh, more than adequate for that. But... We have a bigger vision for this thing, okay? So, in this video, we are going to install the Frost Commander. And uh, I guess we'll have to get this thing out of here. Before we do that, though, size difference. huh? Size does matter. So obviously, this is taller. These are longer. And uh, let's hope it makes a difference. Now, let's make sure we get rid of that sticker. All right. So I'm going to take this one off real fast. At least hopefully it'll be fast. And this is going to be the same process for the other one. Now my RAM has split again. This uh, Viper RAM and do the best job with the uh, the glue. All right. So to do these installations, you'll want one of these longer number two Phillips screwdrivers. Now this also gives me an opportunity to see how well the thermal paste spread. So for a lot of a lot of aspects, you know, this CPU cooler is more than adequate. Didn't quite get the CPU down as low as I had hoped. And running benchmarks, it would see temps in the 90, 90 plus degrees Celsius. So yeah, spread on there pretty good. So I'm gonna clean that up. So it would appear, folks, that we have the exact same kit already uh, installed. The same kit that they provided parts for, and it's going to be in this bag. So with that said, we're not going to have to spend as much time doing the installation, or are we? Well, I guess I should show you guys how to do this, right? So there is bracket, this bracket, and I'm not sure where all the rest of the parts are. All right, so I'm gonna, I am gonna completely take this apart and put those boxes, those parts in there, just in case one of these is different. But we're gonna be looking for this part, uh, this not really a spacer. Uh, the screw, that bracket, the back plate, and it's going to go together like that. So this is this is actually different than the one that was on here. Potentially they've redesigned this to make it better. There were some aspects of it that I can tell you I didn't really care for, but um, it looks like it would have worked, to be honest with you. Something I've found is I have messed with more and more of these CPU coolers for uh, 12th and 13th gen that you can almost get away with um, using some of the other mounting brackets from competitors, which surprised me. But um, I was able to get the Aries Black Gaming CPU cooler that I got. Uh, if I remember correctly, we got that sent to us by Aries Game. 
they don't support it for LGA 1700 and that is a pretty solid CPU cooler so I thought oh, let me see what I've got see if we can get it to work and using um, their brackets as well as some portions of Noctua's I was able to get a uh, bracket that worked all right so we're just completely taking this out and just in case I didn't tell you guys, this is it's like an ASUS Prime B660M-A, if I remember correctly. All right. So here is your uh, LGA1700 mounting plate. This can only go on, uh, well, there's two ways it can go on, I guess. I'll go ahead and show you as I put that in there and drop that down now in the bag there are those spacer type devices I'll grab all four of them and it looks like you uh, screw these in by hand now that always worries me when we have to do this by hand hopefully you guys can see that let's get you a better angle what do you say and of course somebody's trying to call while I'm doing this there we go probably the uh, doctor's office calling me to tell me they sent my referral but they didn't actually send my referral um all right so we're hand tightening and it's always better to be honest with you when these are not done by hand but phillips head uh, it wouldn't have been that difficult for these guys to put that type of uh Invitation in it, right? All right, so that's in. Now, what we need to do is put these on, and there's a certain orientation to them. So let's do this, put it in place, and just make sure that our bracket is going to line up right. So if I put it in like that, that's not how I want the fans to blow. I want them going like this, all right? So we'll have one fan here, one in the middle, and blowing fan out where the I.O. is. So now, there's the potential when we tighten these down that this will tighten everything down. So our four screws, most likely they're metric. I didn't see from the website if this was an American company, Chinese company. Actually, I think it's a Taiwan company, which, you know, these days and into the future, they need our support. Just like Ukraine. Just like Israel. Just like 90% of the world. Alright. That's not what this video is about. Um, so we're screwing this in. Got that one in there. And as I've discussed in other videos, I, I like Noctua's design the best, right? But uh, I would have to say that Noctua's probably got a bunch of patents. And there really is no, no way to completely copy their design. Wow, folks, we were missing a screw somewhere. Did anybody see where I put the screw? <laughs> uh,
All right, five minutes later, we found the screw sitting on the motherboard somewhere. This is where you wish that um, the viewers could come back and tell you, hey, uh, the screw fell under the bracket, the heat sink. But you guys, unfortunately, were silent. All right, thermal paste. I kind of want to use the thermal right thermal paste, right? But... The truth is, folks, in these important situations, we need to use better thermal paste. So, we're going to use Noctua's. Um, sorry, Thermal Right. Hopefully, you guys won't take it personally. I kind of like to do the five dot thing. Okay. All right, yeah, hopefully, that's enough. So, easy enough. Now we'll line this up. And as I say in all my videos, try and get a few threads on there first. Let's rotate this um, on this side and then go to the other side. And then just make sure that you've got them in there, which we do. And we're just going to kind of alternate a little bit. And now... Now we uh, we crank this thing down. So this aspect, I do like this part of the design. Um, all right, so that's on there tight. Basically, you know, spread in the thermal paste, fill in the gaps, right? That's all we're doing with the thermal paste. So, that's on there. Now, for this one, folks, if you don't have your uh, RAM installed already, you'll want to put that in. And just remember, the RAM can go in only one way. Uh, here's our kit, which also has the AMD stuff in it. So we'll need this. This is going to take the two CPU fans and allow you to plug it into one fan header. Um, I'm going to take my thermal paste out, use that another build. And then these brackets will go back in the box. We're not, we may never need those. I don't do a lot of AMD on the channel and you, you never know if we'll ever uh, take this off of the Intel. CPUs, or one day this whole computer could end up in a case and end up sold. All right, so at this point, looking at our instructions, we've got to figure out what fan goes where. Usually the, uh, the bigger one goes in the middle. So there are no instructions to show that. But there is a picture on the box. And that is what it shows. So let's uh, let's go up a little higher. That's what we're aiming for. Oddly, this one does not have the um, thermal right symbol on it, which looks a lot like the the symbol from ID Cooling. But these are definitely different. You know, you start looking at these. CPU coolers, and you start to wonder, hey, is this one the same company? But no. So, intake side, exhaust side, all right? This fan, intake side, exhaust side. And this fan will be on this side. Now, you potentially could add a third fan if you wanted to. Um, probably not going to make any difference. All right, so I want this to go in like that. Basically, it's going to go in there like that. And it looks like it's going to stick on everything. Um, the brackets probably pop in like this. There's no, I don't know that the, the instructions I'm looking at don't show it. So it'll look like that, okay? Sometimes in these videos, you have to be careful that the person 
actually put the bracket in correctly. Um, and then that actually, that one actually snapped in there. Um, it's not supposed to though. All right. So I'm going to drop this down, folks. And then let's try and get an angle where you can at least see one side. I'm right-handed, so um, we're going to pop that in like so. Get that in there into that groove. Same on the other side, hopefully. Let me let you guys get a look at that way that looks. That's how it's supposed to look, all right? Now, do the same thing with this fan. Intake side. And of course, you could run your CPU cooler that way. There's nothing, nothing stopping you. If you have uh, a CPU cooler, excuse me, a case that it vents uh, to the top, you potentially could do that. But uh, this is the way I usually always do it. I like to have all of the air flowing pretty much in the same direction. All right, so we we hooked all those on, and we're going to drop this down. And this cable, folks, is not wanting to play along with us. Um, so the negative is the cable is getting them away. And getting on my nerves. Um, sometimes it's good to actually plug the cables in ahead of time. All right, so these popped off. So I do like the fact these have deeper hooks on them. But even with that, sometimes you just got to be patient. All right, so we're going to hook that on the one side, on the left side. And we want to get this centered. And we're basically doing the same thing, getting it in that groove. And on this side, make sure it's in the groove, which it is. So good looking, good looking CPU cooler, I will say. I will say it's good looking. All right. So. Make sure this is in focus. You're going to turn two fans, uh, not into one, but two fan connectors into one. And then on this motherboard, I do have a CPU and a CPU optional. If I want to keep these the same speed, actually, that's not a true statement. Um, if I was to program these fans, this is a greater diameter than this one, right? So if you know your uh, formulas for uh, calculating flow rate, you actually would have to um, adjust the RPMs of this one uh, for this if you wanted to keep the, the flow rate the same. So this is going to inevitably have to spin faster than that one. If you wanted to keep that that value the same, um, you know, if you go into testing these things, maybe you find out that doesn't matter. But realistically, this flow rate should equal that flow rate, which um, minus losses, they should come out to uh, basically the same on this outside. So. There you go, folks. Uh, we have installed the Thermalright Frost Commander 140. Disassembled our Peerless Assassin. You will see uh, if you want. I'm going to run the benchmark video again. See if we can get the temps down. And hopefully I will uh, be better. Um, be happier with the results. I put my M.2 in. And of course, I already got the RAM in. I need to find a little M.2 screw. Hopefully that is one. But that's going to do it for the video, folks. Thanks for checking it out. Please like, please subscribe.